Episode 142, we're going to be talking about real estate events, webinars, and much more. Oh, my. We're going to get started right now. All right, episode 142. We Was may have a enough guest. Was that of a fade out for you, Matt? Yeah, he didn't oh. even notice. We took him a year to it. finally get I what he wanted, it. and he wasn't even paying attention. I heard it. I'm over here doing my contribution to the show, which is <laughs> getting myself in Facebook jail by sharing this out for the first two and a half minutes. Yeah, that's fair. So yeah. people help me share this shit. I yes. thought it was splendid. It was All fantastic. Right. <laughs> episode 142, we are going to be discussing how to use real estate live events and webinars in your business. And we may have a special guest if he shows up um, a little bit late anyway. So Justin Nelson may be joining us, maybe not. It doesn't matter if he does. In his defense, we did just ask him to do this about three hours ago. Yeah, like yeah. at lunch, we asked him, like, you're going to be on a podcast in two hours? And then his response, so Justin Nelson lives in Nashville. His response was like, virtually? Like, yeah, bro, do you have a solution yeah. for getting here? <laughs> exactly. the hell are we They're hopping the car, bro. What are we talking about? You know who's not virtually? The Ron. The Ron. The Ron's not virtually. He is, uh, if you don't know the Ron, the Ron the. Smith, the Ron, he is, uh, look, he's the the best representative with Armadillo Home Warranty. And it's not your father's home warranty, which I just, that's going to be. It might I be like your that. mama's, though. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I don't. I like it. I, just, I still don't understand. He, he, when we were talking about it, he's just, it's not your father's home warranty. And I'm like. I don't remember my father ever talking about home. Yeah, warranty. I can tell you right now, Marty no. Kelderman, in his sixty some years on this planet, has given a shit about home warranty. I can see like a father <laughs> having a conversation on a back porch with his son about like cigars, and he's like, "This is how it should be done." And then a new cigar company comes out, and they're like, "This is not your father's cigar." That makes sense. I don't see a lot of home warranty conversations like that. What if so that see- same father is having a conversation with his son on the porch, and the water heater explodes <laughs> out of the front window, and then he looks at him, he's like, "Son, this is." why we called the Ron. That's right. The Ron. <laughs> so armadillo.1 dot one, dot one backslash tour. Armadillo.1 armadillo backslash tour. T-O-R-E. T-O-R-E one one O-N-E. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's how it's going today. One O-N-E. Yeah. Is today Wednesday or is today? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can we We've just only done day. this 141 other times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can we just, we're just going to mail this one. Haven't yeah. gotten our 10,000 we'll hours yet. No, no, not yet. Um, but, I mean, the, the person who has got their 10,000 hours in is oh, Mortgage Mike. Master. If you want that, that Mortgage Mike stamp of approval, and if, if you've got some clients that's – actually, I've got a good story for this um, while, we're, while we're waiting for Justin who says he didn't get, get the, uh, the link to oh. jump on. Yeah. So Whatever. a good story on this is right now clients are battling high interest rates. You've heard us talk about it before. They're battling um, – you know, if you're buying an investment property, now investors are having to put down a larger down payment. And so we have a, a client right now that uh, was going to use one of the big bank's lenders – Right, so one of those big banks. one of the big make could be Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Chase. Um, who's the other big bank? There's an old John Mulaney joke where he makes fun of airlines, and he's like, "I don't want to call anybody else, so we'll just make up a fake airline. We'll just call it like Delta Airlines." <laughs> <laughs> um, so one of the big banks, and uh, he's supposed to close tomorrow, mm. right? And um, with that closing tomorrow, their closing costs, and this is a hundred and let's call it a fifteen thousand dollar property. Let's just say hypothetically sure. for shits and giggles, yeah. one hundred fifteen thousand. Well, you got to put twenty percent down now. That's yeah. that is a requirement on on investment. Yeah. How much do you think um, uh, closing costs would be for a hundred fifteen thousand dollar house for a, a buyer? Like twelve hundred bucks. Yeah, well, maybe. Well, I mean, maybe. a little bit more than that because you got lender Couple fees. Grand. You got there. lender fees with lender. One hundred fifteen should be uh, you know roughly maybe four thousand or less. Thousand four thousand. Yeah. His out of pocket, including down payment, was going to be like thirty six thousand dollars. Whoa! Which means, if I'm doing my, if I remember my numbers correctly, one hundred fifteen thousand at twenty percent was, it was like twenty three thousand dollars. So they're projecting he, him needing thirteen thousand dollars. Wow! And so, 
of course, we're getting it over to Mortgage Mike for a second opinion. Sure. Right? So you definitely want to send your clients from from the get-go. Don't have Mortgage Mike at the second. Yeah. Right? He can do them, and he will make you look like a rock star. But send your clients to Mortgage Mike. Let him give you that Mortgage Mike stamp of approval. So just go to MortgageMikeOfTexas.com. I myself am closing an investment loan with Mortgage Mike on June 6th, and I'm not paying that much in closing costs no. as I would in, in that scenario. No, you're not. Living proof. And you're gonna that investment property is going to be managed by Homeward. Homeward. HomewardDFW.com. Yeah. Yeah. Clark, that right there is an RV. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it will be managed by Dana, our president over at Homeward Property Management. That's HomewardDFW.com. We're rocking and rolling over there. Send us your referrals. We'll take amazing care of them. I'll actually tell you right now, this is just not just like a sponsored thing we do on the show. We have actually picked up a lot of properties because it is amazing how when you run a real estate business that is hyper scrutinized for client service and great reviews and taking great care of people, and then you try to translate that to property management, you find out how little a lot of property management companies care about that. Like they just don't care about providing excellent service. It's actually been an easy transition to kind of bring a lot more client service to that industry. And we're, we're really, really happy to, to, to see everybody's support and, and all of the referrals rolling in. We, we will take amazing care of your people, but check us out. HomewardDFW.com. Actually, check out HomewardDFW.com backslash realtors for that big old fat referral fee. Send us your people that way and we'll get you paid. Can we break down while we're, while we're also talking about real estate events and webinars that can build your business, right? That can set you up as that go-to real estate expert. I will tell you that, um, you know, when we, when we went into, and this is, this is not a advertisement for Homeward, but I want to say that everything that we talk about on this show was implemented into building of the property management company. And so that can go into also these live of these live real estate events and these webinars yeah. that that you know if if you've been a longtime listener of this show, you'll know that at one time we had Tor Academy, which yeah. was a a kind of product, a real estate product uh, training and coaching and development company. Yep. And we had uh, we had a we we'd started out with a webinar. It was how to take ten plus listings every single month. Yeah. Um, it was tour.com backslash take ten. And from that, we had set up a webinar on a Sunday night, right? It was Sunday afternoon. We didn't know what the hell we were doing. Yeah, we had turns three, out that's not the best time for webinar. We had, we, had three, a lot of, we had a lot of people on it. Yeah. Yeah. We somehow got like 150 people on that. Yeah. Which is weird. So so out of 300 registrations, like 50% show up or something like that? Yeah, we got like a bunch. Yeah. And so from that is is what we wanted to talk about. We were going to have Justin Nelson on is, uh, and, and we can still do it just from our level of expertise, is running real estate events and webinars is a great way in this marketplace to stand out as that go-to expert. And one, it allows you to create content that you can you can replicate and reuse, as well as building Homeward DFW, our property management company. We've taken everything we've learned from the texting automation mm -hmm. um, to building out list to our VA, you know, using VAs in our business. Yep. So Justin Nelson runs Sphere Rocket VA. So yeah. Sphere Rocket VA, he was one of the first um, endorsers and the sponsors of this podcast show. And we've taken all of that from a leverage piece. And look, the the property management company just started at the really- Basically the winter. Yes, Yeah. Q4, which Basically. is probably not the best time. No. You're gonna launch a property management company, no. maybe, there's Not, no, there's no better time than the present. Yeah, I mean, the best time would have been 20 years ago, right? Yeah, and then the second best time would have been Q4 of last year. Yeah, and so, <laughs> <laughs> so from that, what did we do? We 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 set up our outline and strategies, and you know, from there we started growing. In fact, we just signed a client with with multiple properties for us to manage, and that came from stuff that you guys have been doing in in your living in business, real yeah. estate business, and what you've shared on the show. 
And it's now we're now growing that property management company at a at a good clip. Yeah. Well, and it's funny because there was there was a, sh a short period of time you were talking about the automation. I have the opportunity to field all of that automation. And, and again, if you've been a part of the group, the only real estate group we'll be a part of, we used to post the responses in there. We kind of stopped doing that because I felt like it was the group was getting big enough where I thought some people might be offended by yeah, some of the stuff sideways, that we got back. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I never responded to that stuff. But here's what I will say as far as the property management, we've seen automation go out for circle prospecting expireds and all of these other things. The the response rate and the interest that people have has been shocking like i said over the past few years i've been watching that part of the business grow and change and and maybe we just wrote the greatest ad copy that's ever existed but through really simple systems we are adding multiple people to the pipeline every single week and it's very similar to how we drove people to live events and how we drove people to webinars and how we, it's, it's all part of the same system and i, I, I talked to agents about this even with some of their scripts it's, it's all part of the same conversation the middle part changes but the beginning and the end part don't change. I want to get to know you, and I want you to come here. How do we do that part in the middle? And I think that's where all this automation ties into being able to drive people to these events, too. 100%. And it's, it's, I think on the property management side, it works because we're, we might be some of the only people doing it. But it works everywhere, right? And I think that's one of the biggest things. Like I want to dive into like the specificity around live events and how we've, we've, we've kind of really leaned into them, all of us. I think the, the one thing to sort of like preface this with is, the only reason that people don't take a lot of action on doing live events in their business is it's it's that lack of confidence, right? It's that nobody would come. I don't know what to say. I don't bring value, all that type of stuff. So just understand that like going through the rest of this conversation for however long this podcast goes on, everything actionable that we give you here is all us having lived it, having failed forward, and... You can't live it. You can't fail, fail forward. You can't be successful at it. And if you're not really, really okay with like getting expanding your comfort zone and maybe sucking at it at first, like going back to that take ten uh, listings a month webinar or whatever, like it's so funny the dichotomy that was present in that room at the time because we all were taking ten plus listings a month that at that time, which makes us you know objectively successful in real estate and. Behind the scenes before that webinar started, it was a fucking disaster. Yeah. Like, we had no idea what we were doing. It was our first webinar. We didn't know how to set it up, how to invite people, how to market it. Two minutes before we were supposed to go live, we found out, like, the camera was just totally whitewashing the background. And then it broke completely. We were, like, in pure panic mode. We have a bunch of people in the waiting room. We just did not... We didn't prepare well because we didn't know how to prepare. Like we thought we were ready and we realized like we didn't have anything like set up the way we needed to. Anyway, I say all that to say like that's really one of the things that I think maybe not just with this podcast. This would I think that all of us has do have done well in our businesses in general is that it whether it's live events or any strategy you're going to use to to further your vision or your business, you've got to get really comfortable with it being really terrible at first and, and being okay with expanding your comfort zone that way. You're gonna suck at everything at first. You know why? Because you've never done it before. And if you were amazing at it right away, that means that other people could be amazing at it right away, which means it wouldn't be successful because everybody could do it. And here's, here's the thing that I always struggled with with that particular <laughs> thought process was I just thought it was meant for other people. And here's what I've learned is that if, if your mindset right now is listening to what Brian's talking about and hearing that in the sense that it's like, well, that's fine, but I couldn't do that. Right? Right. I'm just telling you right now, you just haven't gotten uncomfortable enough times to push through that barrier. Because it, there, is so many, there are so many things, I posted a video about this today, that things in my life that I've been uncomfortable with and learned from, and so many things that I'm still actively uncomfortable with and scared to share, right? Like that part of the journey I don't think ends. But what I learned in just pressing into it was that some shit you get uncomfortable with, you will change. And if your mindset is still one that you're like, hey, look, you know, I, I, I'm not going to get uncomfortable in, in, in some kind of specific way or I'm not going to do something hard because I don't want to fail. You're just you haven't been uncomfortable enough to understand that everybody can push through that shit, dude. And that with the video stuff and the webinars and even talking to people in our businesses, I think we're really scared to get uncomfortable because we're afraid of rejection. All the stuff that's so cliched, we all know about it. But if you're not willing to lean into that uncomfortableness, you're just not going to move forward very much other than whatever incremental bullshit you get every year just by getting older. <laughs> yeah. And, and so with that, you know, I was, I'm looking at, you know, there's a lot of people in the industry that run like a um, run homebuyer 
you know, seminars or webinars. Yeah, that's what I drive into is like, where do we get actionable? Like, if I was going to do a live event today to grow my real estate business, like, where would my my mind go? Is like the first thing I could do. So, number one, the easiest way would be, you know, maybe how to I would gear it towards renters, a yeah. home buying seminar, and and how to how to help renters own get into a home ownership, right? Yeah. And the the best way I think to do that that we had I shared a stat this morning with the Good Home Team. Um, that like our local areas here in the Dallas Fort Worth area, you know the the year over year rent increases in the main market uh, um, in the major cities around here are up over twenty yeah. percent. Some is twenty, some seventeen, some is twenty three, some is twenty five, some is twenty seven percent. The and, average for all of Texas was sixteen percent. That includes like rural areas. Yes. So in metropolitan areas, I can imagine it's over twenty. So from that, the average two bedroom. <laughs> Um, or the median two-bedroom rent in Frisco, Texas, for example, is over two thousand dollars a month. Woo. So, can you help a? Can you go and start really reaching out and building a home buyer webinar for people that are paying over two thousand bucks a month in rent? Absolutely. So, so the steps that I would do to set it up is is I would probably start going in and polling your your social media, right? So, so. Um, and then going into some like the Facebook marketplaces mm-hmm. and and just do a poll. Say, you know, taking a survey for national real or local real estate magazine or for, yeah. for the news that you can share. Um, and from that, you know, who's paying over $2,000 a month in rent? Do a thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever that may be. Comment, you know, make a fire emoji, whatever that may be. Make and I think this is emoji. one of the great things that like between Nick Krem and Justin Nelson and those guys that they've been able to teach us is, is there is an art to the storytelling. There is an art to the product. There's an art to the conversation as well. And like, I think just if Justin's ready, I don't know if you can hear us so now, you can jump in on this too. But this is where I would love to have his expertise on some of this stuff and, and, and ultimately hear how they're doing, doing things because... Dude, those guys have their shit dialed in across the board, right? The way they present stuff, the amount of, uh, you know, just talking to Justin a couple of weeks ago when he was in town for the good to great thing, just the sheer volume of events they're doing every year. Like they have that stuff dialed in. So anyways, yo, what up, kid? That is the most Justin Nelson background. It can't possibly be going that well because he's had to sell all his furniture. (laughs) No, but here's the thing is the couple of years of doing these shows with this dude is I know that like he's just always ready to jam on to the next opportunity. So he don't even buy shit (laughs) has anybody ever seen the movie date night with like steve carell and tina fey and there's james franco's character in there who's always ready to just bolt at any given (laughs) at at, at, at a moment's notice that's what i feel like justin's like he's like don't buy too much stuff man because we'll be out of here in a couple hours (laughs) which is really funny because this place is like six thousand square feet it's so so fucking echoey this is living proof i love it so it's six thousand square feet and i can hear your voice bouncing off of every wall this is amazing which in your (laughs) justin in your in your townhouse that you had you had a whole podcast set up you had the background you made it look nice and now you're like you know what? Screw it. No, oh. did we we can, we're gonna sit here and clown on his background. No, we, I think we it's amazing. Three hours ago to be on this show and he's fucking here. So yeah, it's thanks our, for being here. These guys are dicks. Yeah, I appreciate <laughs> you jumping on, brother. Hey, hey, it, it, it's all right. This other six thousand square feet, pools, hot tubs. Nice. Uh, See, flex on them, bro. Yeah, Dude. it's fine. It's, uh, <laughs> this bad. Is this still is this still Nashville? Still in Nashville. Yeah, I actually. I just got rid of my downtown uh, penthouse place and got another one. So I'm in the process of moving so nice. so there's your social proof that he knows what he's talking about yeah absolutely yeah. so ju- so oh yeah but well congrats man that's awesome yeah so so justin walk us through you know we we you know when we kind of three hours ago brainstormed this because our other the other guests that we're going to have on you know unfortunately had some some uh personal stuff to go you know that was happening is you are running live events and being a part of live events at a very very high level and you you've seen massive growth in your business sphere rocket um all through live events so kind of walk us through you know one how are you doing that the steps and then how could a how could a real estate agent and their direct to consumer utilize this Mm -hmm. yeah so for me like so we'll probably do close to i'll probably guest about 200 events this year i've already done 97 this year um, which is a lot sometimes two a day um, what, what I tell people a lot of is it's all about what we call force traction. So force traction is I could either be like this Instagram model that just blows up your viral marketing, right? Which as we can see, it's not going to happen. Um, or <laughs> we 
we could just ram it down people's throats, as I call it, for lack of a better term. It's like I I can just go show up in a room of 100, and even if everybody hates me, I'm still going to get 10 people to follow me on Facebook, 10 people to follow me on Instagram. And I do that 90 times. Next thing I know, I got 1,000 followers, and everybody's like, how would you get 1,000 followers, right? Now, obviously, you put a little bit of likability. You put a little bit of extra effort. You buy a few people of drinks that you, you go to a room of 100, you, you get on stage, you know, whatever it is, even if it's on a panel, you just went from 10 people following you to 40, 50 out of that hundred. Now know who you are, um, you know, easy, right? Like I, I can get the email list from Nick's event go, Hey, cool. Now I can follow all these people on Instagram. They follow me back immediately because they're like fresh in your brain. And so, you know, we obviously, for me, I do that on like a national level, but you know, applying that to the local level, same thing, right? That, that real estate agent that goes to, you know, if you intentionally do it right, not just going to a networking event to drink and then be the person that also goes out there with no business. But if you're present, if you're making stages, if you're at charity events and you're and you you do it the right way, you drop in for the most important pieces, you make an impact and then you get out and don't get stuck in the seven hours of before activities, after activities. You know what I've learned, at least me personally, some of the best people that throw events come into the event make massive impact and then remove themselves from that environment as fast as possible because they just, you know, they're really taking advantage of their time, getting mass effect and then getting out, you know, and getting back to their daily life. So, so, so with that, if you were to throw a live event from direct to consumer, so let's, let's call it direct to consumer, not, not business to business. Yep. So if you were, let's say in Nashville, right. And you really want to make a, a splash in the marketplace what would be your your strategy on doing that for a live event not a webinar just live event at the moment yeah so i was telling i actually ran a class on this this morning with our sphere rocket like highest level clients and i told everybody in there i said the only thing that matters about events and the you know and kind of don't hold me to this the only thing that matters in the beginning about an event is if you have people in the room or not whether you spend a dollar whether you have sponsors whether you have a million dollars in the event, if no one shows up, nothing comes of that, right? And so the number one key concern of any event thrower should be how do I put people in the room and then I can construct the event around that last minute if I have to. And so what my strategy would be in the local area is to take someone else's fame and use it to my advantage, right? So if we're going direct to consumer, consumers like celebrities, consumers like charities, consumers like the top restaurants in town, consumers like activities, right? So for me, it would be identifying a few of those local combinations of how do I find a great spot that everybody already knows and likes? How do I combine that with talent, comedy, entertainment? And then how am I in my light being the one that put that on, right? How can I come in and go, wow, look at these hundreds of people that showed up for this concert and yet I put it on, but really the people, the, you know, what drew people there was not me. What drew people there was the concert, right? And so I think a lot of people, they, they, they think about, well, who can I invite to get to this event? And who can I invite? Who can my team members invite? I, and the thing I've learned with real estate is if we as a real estate agent, as the rainmaker, if any of our team members, if we're put in charge of getting people to an event, none of us are going to invite people to an event, right? Like, <laughs> like living proof. Like literally the last second, like we're like, oh shit, there's an event tomorrow. We should invite people. Yeah, and so if we center it around how do how do we do the least amount of effort, yet the event still goes really well, right? So like I'd rather go spend five thousand dollars and pay a popular band in town and get the band's groupies, get the band's regulars that already go to another bar to watch them, and then we just put it on. And so it's finding a way to attract that talent from other organizations. So, you know, the other thing I would do is I would you know, we call it the 10 sponsor rule within our organization. We try and go and get 10 sponsors because if the 10 sponsors come and they all pay $100, just for an example, I am now telling the sponsors, you can sponsor this event for free if and only if you bring me 20 ticket sales, right? Yeah. Um, because it's more, for me, I'd rather have 10 sponsors all bring me 20 people and have 200 people there than I would have 10 sponsors all pay me 500 bucks. That's so so I think for me, that'd be my biggest piece of advice is how do we get people in the room without us having to rely on only our email list or contact list? I love that, man. We're, uh, I'll 
give you a, a great example. We're doing a, a, an Airbnb event next month, um, how to buy your first Airbnb. And that was kind of the cool premise that the, the, the uh, venue that we're doing it at is like a local um, a speakeasy is not the right word because prohibition is over. But it's like a cool bar that you need to get the password to get into. Right. And then it's kind of the hook is like you get 50 people is our, kind of our max cutoff. And then you get to have this kind of experience that you usually don't get on any normal mm -hmm. day. And then we're kind of like parlaying that with the educational factor that is the live event. So yeah. like feeding off of that type of thing, I think works really, really well. Yeah. Well, there was a, I had a coaching client back in the day and I don't even know if she was coaching. I don't know what she was, but she, uh, she was really, really well known within Keller Williams and she would do something called brews and home buying, which was oh, amazing cool. because she figured out, um, I think her name was Kimberly Missouri, if I remember right. She figured out that if you offer a whole bunch of people that go to breweries a free beer, it's almost like the timeshare thing. Like, yeah. it's like she got with the breweries and said, hey, can I have a section of your place? We're going to give away free beer for anybody that listens to a 30 minutes to an hour. And she figured it out. She's like, people are already coming here for the beer. People already like the beer. Yeah. People that buy brewery beer are usually your hipster, younger crowd that actually has some money in their pocket, right? They're not throwing their last dollar at a $10 beer. And so she figured this out. She's like, I'm just going to attach to what's already happening. And so she knew five, 10, 15 people were going to show up anyways, just from the advertising coming from the place. Cause they all got a free beer. And then she added on like, okay, cool. We got the 15, 20 people. I know will be there every time if we host it here. Then I'm going to invite my people, right? I'm going to get 15 to 20. Then I'm going to run Facebook ads and get 15 to 20. Then I'm going to get my lender partner to bring me 15 or 20. Next thing you know, you got a hundred people all getting a free beer, which cost her, what five bucks oh, time yeah. not that know, much yeah 100 people and so now she you know and, and she i think last i knew in her second year she did like 40 million dollars just from what home buying and brews that was it that was all she was doing she was doing two three months i think this is the thing this is such a perfect like actionable piece right here i think to to, to start to take this into like the really actionable realm the, the mindset you want to have around throwing your live events. All right. So if you're doing direct to consumer, you're an agent or you're, you lead a real estate team or you're, you're a local real estate agent, right? And, and you're, you're going direct to consumer with your live events. The thing that you need to keep in mind is the competitor in this space is no longer other agents. Meaning like we tend to think of marketing these things in the, in the frame of like, I want to do a seminar for first time home buyers, let's say, right? What is my hook? How do I um, how do I get people to my event? Right? What would be the the catch that that people are gonna want to come to my event? And we tend to think of things in in terms of like what am I doing versus what other people who are doing something similar are doing? Right? What that's not really the competition. The reality is when you're throwing a live event, it is you versus what else could these people do with their time? And so when you add a hook like, well, let's do it at a badass brewery. Right. Or let's do it somewhere where people are going to enjoy it. Like, what is the other layer we can add to this? Where we're not only doing a first time home buyer seminar. We're giving these people an experience as well. We're partnering with a business who's going to benefit from it. They're going to give them an experience. The sponsors are going to be excited about it. Like, that's where you got to start thinking around around the, the, the idea of this is not. What is what is what is me up against what other agents are doing? It is what is me against the time commitment that these people can make to literally doing anything else in their lives? And then how do you parlay those two ideas and make it really enjoyable for people? That's going to get butts in seats. When well, and and Justin, you you probably I don't know if you've been a part of this or not. So you know he, he, Al Stasic, you know a friend of ours does this exact same setup that even Justin said, he calls it the rock and rescue rock and mm -hmm. rescue Cleveland. Yeah. And, and he's been like rock music. Well, so there's, it's, it's outdoor venue, it's music. Yeah. And then he, he puts it around a charity that was started by Nikki Gregory. She's out oh, in Amarillo. Yeah. Um, and it's called, uh, agents act. It's agents against yeah, child the trafficking. Child trafficking one, man. And, That's cool. and so they had raised, I think last year was, you know, between agents act, um, at the Renee Jones Empowerment Center, they raised over seventy thousand dollars for those organizations, hey, and wow. it was featured on their Fox Eight New Day Cleveland morning show. And so, when what what to hammer the point that Brian said is, again, people throw events, people know real estate agents, and and it, it's what people remember is how you made them feel or the experiences. Right, and so if they go to a rock and rescue event here locally, or in Cleveland, or in Nashville, it's like, man, Justin put on this amazing event. If he's able to get, you know, 
Dusty Black to come and, and sing and share and whatever. I mean, he I'm obviously not calling him Dusty. Yeah, no. I refuse. <laughs> I've known him too long. I've known him a real long time. And so from that, you know, when you start making those connections, I'll give you another prime example. We threw an event called, you know, from good to great two weeks ago. Justin, Matt, and Brian all were 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 speakers at my event. And then I had a keynote, Logan Stout, who I found out charges a ton of money. I was there for that conversation, dude. A ton of money Woo. to be the keynote speaker. Uh, thankfully, he 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 did it because I, I donate and I buy books that go to his charity. And, but you know that was a one off deal. Yeah. But from that, it's it's now my association is within that that area. We've got the we we've got the videos, we got the photos, we've got the event. It's it's proof of how that event went off yeah. and so Justin's right it's about putting butts in seats so if I'm taking notes on this number one is putting butts in seats so how can you put butts in seats find a badass like you said a badass hotspot venue in and around your area I'm sure any area has one um, you know and if you don't if you're not going to put it around around uh, maybe music or whatever what is going to be the appeal to get someone to come out yeah. And so just find whatever that is. There's a lot of local celebrities that will that are that is relatively inexperienced to have or, or uh, uh, um, uh, uh, not as expensive that would come out and do a meet and greet after or part of the the you know uh, event that you're hosting. And so from that, now you're associated with that local celebrity. So you know, and it, and now you've got. And, and then you want to make sure, like we do, you set up the video and the photo concept so that you can then make it live on forever. That's the evidence of success campaign that you run. And Justin, who's got an event coming up uh, here uh, next week, next next week, so May 19th? Mm -hmm. I don't know what next week is. Yeah. Is that yeah. May 19th? Yeah. May 19th. May 19th through the 21st. Yeah, May 19th through the 21st. And he has pushed out over 500 tickets. Yeah. And he knows firsthand because Brian and I are, um, you know, we've been we've been asked to speak. We don't know we're speaking on Justin, so um, whatever that's going to be, maybe we'll just go up there and, and kick, uh, around, kick around. Maybe ask for investors <laughs> uh, for the prestige, the prestige, prestige worldwide. worldwide. <laughs> and but from that, Justin knows firsthand. Brian and I have have not really pushed out this event the way that we should. Sure. And you have nine days. We have nine days left. So mm -hmm. here we go. So, you know, go to go meet with Justin, get with us. Maybe we've got some tickets for you. Maybe we don't. Um, but from that, the live event, it's, it's all about, again, butts and seats and then getting that evidence of success mm -hmm. from there. You know, people will will you'll get signups, you'll get inquiries. And then, Justin, walk us through. All right. You're listening to this. And you're like, man, I don't really want to do a live event, Brian. Mm. I don't really want to drop as much as what Justin is. I don't want to drop. 5,000. Justin mentioned 5,000. I don't want to spend that kind of money. No. So if I'm a new agent or maybe, maybe I'm just, I'm just trying to get my act together. I'm trying to get that, that consistent commission check coming yep. in. Let's break down Justin, the webinars. Cause you started your business yes. doing webinars as well. Mm -hmm. So kind of walk us through that webinar game of, of direct to consumer. Yeah. So for me, like even outside of webinars, like we called it guest podcasting. It kind of evolved itself into webinars over time. Um, but we even see real estate agents do this right now. So like what we don't realize is in our own backyard, we have so many like local social celebrities, like, um, in, like I live in Kingston Springs, Tennessee now, like out in the woods, there's a lady like three houses down. She literally runs like this, uh, she called it like a sewing club and they have a podcast about how to run a sewing business. What? And, yeah, like it's it's weird, man. Like, it's called threads. Yeah, That's probably. What it should be called. That's glorious if it is. <laughs> <laughs> and it's crazy, man, because I was watching it the other day, and there's a real estate agent on there that sponsors it, and I was like, "Why do you sponsor this?" And she's like, "Well, you know, there's like three thousand monthly downloads, all from Southwest Tennessee, you know, blah blah blah." And I was like, "Do you get business from this?" And she's like, "Yeah, I do three deals a month." Whoa! Yeah. I was like, "What?" And, and so like kind of that same thing is like when we look across like uh, I think a lot of people do a good um, Ryan Stuman actually taught me this uh, little Wayne does a really good job at this. Uh, if you if, if anybody knows anything about little Wayne, I heard this from Ryan. And I looked it up completely true. 
Lil Wayne has appeared on more other artists' songs that are top hits than he ever has made of his own. Do you guys not? I don't see know if that? I needed to see that stat because that seems really obvious. You know how you yeah. don't need to see that stat, Jesse, Young Jesse. Can you pull this up? What Luka Doncic said about uh, Lil Wayne the other night. This is this is topical because it's DFW. Doesn't matter. Yeah. But yeah, he's probably appeared on more other songs. He's like Lil Wayne and Ludacris have that yeah. perfectly yeah. dialed in. Oh, it's dialed in. And so people all the time, they ask me, like, Justin, are you connected to so-and-so? Like, do you know the mayor? I'm like, no, but I've been on twice. Like, I've been on, the, you know, their podcast twice. And so, um, yeah. So it's like, how do you just, like, randomly put your face in all these situations where everybody just starts associating you with everything? <laughs> he did. He responded to it. So Lil Wayne texted Luka Doncic. Yeah. He tweeted and, at him. Sorry, right, tweeted him and called him a hoe. And then Luca tweeted back something about how many other it. artist songs he's been on, which was super topical to what you just said, which yeah. is hysterical. But no, I mean that's 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 just that's just oh there we go. Luca Doncic claps back at Lil Wayne's viral tweet. It's so true though, dude. Like how how can he call me a hoe when he features with whoever will pay him? <laughs> I mean, pretty good for an Eastern European guy. That's a good that's a good clap back. It is. It's true, it though. Is. <laughs> it's the same thing, man. But it's like, I think that's the thing. It's like, how can we attach ourselves to other people's events? Mm -hmm. It's huge. Like, how can I come and bring 20 people to this event? And then they're like, man, thanks for bringing people to my event. Next time they run the event, they're like, you want to do it together? And so I think, like, just the local chamber of commerce is like, I don't really I hate BNI and all that to a degree. Like, sure. I think it's this guy's place. But I think being able to go in there for a little bit and get those connections, then actually get out of that environment and go and actually execute on them and build those relationships and, you know, go to their events, like just pop your face all over the place, even at other people's events. I think it's huge. Well, um, I, I, I love that. I, I mean, I, I love the, the, uh, cause we're having the webinar conversation about yeah. this. It's, it's so much easier from a time commitment standpoint to do like what you're talking about, that kind of the guest, the guest podcast style, right? You can go direct to consumer or direct to your audience or whatever. You can basically be, you know, MC is the wrong word, yeah. right? But the featured content can be the guests that you bring in who will provide a lot of value. And it's much less of a time commitment to them because they're just jumping online really fast the way that you and I are talking right yeah. now. So I think if you're looking to get started with a lot of direct-to-consumer stuff, who can you essentially partner with that will help bring value? It helps them, so it's mutually beneficial. Uh, it, it, it keeps you from having to come up and, and foster the entire event yourself. Mm -hmm. They're going to bring people. You're going to bring people. And you continue to replicate that, that system. And it's probably going to suck a little bit at first. You're just yeah. learning this, right? And I think that's one of the things that keeps people from taking action on this type of stuff. If it feels like we're not giving you a lot of stuff that's like actionable right now, it's because you're going to have to just jump in and try this stuff, right? Going back to our first webinars and even live events. They were trash at first. Matt and I have done live events for two people. I'm not kidding. Two people and our sponsor. And we were two people and our sponsor was one person. <laughs> so it was a three on two. We were playing like we, yeah. we had more than enough for a man defense. Like and we've done those, you know, we've done webinars with almost nobody. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we've done webinars with 300 people on them. And I think it goes back to what you were saying earlier. It, it, it doesn't have to be for everybody to be impactful. And I think that's what Brian had learned from it. There were times where we had two people in the room and got one person to reach back out to us. There were times we had 30 people in the room yep. and got one person to reach back out to us. Yeah. They, they, and I think that's what agents get caught up in is, is they see the, the first off the initial guest invite yeah. and then everybody doesn't show up. So they're like, oh, this is a failure. Yeah. Yeah. And then when they get people there, depending on how many people are in the room, they might lose energy for it. And I think what Brian and I did really well was even if the event turned out to be a total bust, we just still had the time a lot of we just sat down and tried to build relationships with those exact people because to your point I, we didn't need everybody we just needed yeah. a couple of people from each one to engage and buy into what we were talking yes. about so, ju so just if, if you put two or three drinks in your system it doesn't matter yeah. I mean, yeah. way easier bro i'm gonna well, train wreck yeah. every business well, that we're trying yeah. to build if i do that <laughs> yeah exactly we've seen well, how the show goes yeah. <laughs> uh, well, hey, well i was just gonna say like one thing people don't realize like what we do and it's kind of behind the scenes is we have what we call a robbery podcast um, and I tell people this, and it's funny because some people are watching this, probably been on it. Okay. We have a podcast where we reach out to people and ask for them to be featured on our podcast. And it's honestly just so that way we have an excuse to meet with them. Wait, if I break call break that down. Yeah. How does how does that work? Yeah, so we have a podcast called the Icon Podcast. It okay. uh, it targets EXP Icon agents because we know they all make three hundred thousand plus. Okay, and so they're a perfect like product for us. But this can apply direct to consumer too. It's like. We reach out with a fancy email that says like, hey, do you want to be on our Icon podcast? 
and they're like, yes, because like most people have never been on a podcast before. They're like, sure. yeah, amazing. So we get like an 80% acceptance rate. Now, there's 3,000 EXP icon agents across EXP. So what I do is I reach out and go, so we send out 300 emails a month. We, we schedule about 200 podcasts a month right now. So we're, we're executing 200 podcasts per month on this. Now, now, I have a full-time podcast host. I don't do that anymore. But what happens is, is when we reach out, now we have what I call 200 appointments. Yeah. Because we're now getting a conversation with them. They know who Sphere Rocket is now. And yet, if I would have asked those 300 people for coffee, there's no way. There's but to be on no a podcast. Ooh. So how do you make... Wow. Yep. I already see it going through your mind. Yeah, yeah. dude. A hundred percent, man. So you're providing mutual value. And then the, the symptom of it is a, is a deeper conversation with somebody that you otherwise wouldn't have been able to really connect with at all. Correct. So let me, let me ask you this and uh, actually I'll break it down if direct to consumer, cause that's business to business for Justin direct to consumers. I'm going to reach out to, to, um, local politicians or maybe yeah. politicians that are running or yep. school board members or city council and and start highlighting that get into their world then you have their email address yep. and from that then what you can do is start start you know it's parasite marketing yep. and and get it on their their social medias and yep. start promoting out there then your your now associated with within that that you know community. that group that community right so fire chiefs police chiefs yes uh, middle school teachers like the principals like you could do like every principal of every middle school in your area bro like, i just realized we have a podcast studio yes and private schools here's a, <laughs> i'm going to tell you right now you know this is something that that heather and i went through with with asher was um is do we send asher to public school does he go to private school does he go to charter school should he we homeschool if we were to homeschool what's mm -hmm. the options and routes of that and so you break those podcasts down. There's a lot of people that are going to be that are going to be in that same realm in that same you know lack of experience or knowledge very soon. And so are your live events or webinars always even about real estate, or are you using them as a platform to help other people promote whatever they're about? And then it's also just an opportunity to get more conversations with people. Correct. Wow. So it just doesn't even matter. I and mean, literally sometimes we like the whole podcast, we don't mention anything we do. We literally yeah. watch us. You can look it up. It's called the icon. We literally just interview them and pull out their story, pull out their passions, their desires. And like if their end goal is to sell a product, we literally light them up. We're the best wing woman, wing man, like whatever, like we're all about it. Um, but at the end of the day, they share it with their people. Now here's the fun part. If you guys, if you want to know the trick here, I had a professional radio DJ create us a intro, a middle and an outro to the podcast that actually includes me and my voice. And it's like, this podcast is sponsored by Sphere Rocket Virtual Assistants owned by Justin Nelson, one of the top EXP agents around the world, yeah. blah, 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 blah. And then that plays the beginning and the middle and the end. And so when they share this out to their people, like we're, we're permanently attached to that. And so the, the marketing message isn't even being done by like the host or by you or anything like that. It's just done like as a stitch in, yeah, which is time. really nice. And we use StreamYard for it. So, so Dude, it's, it's simple, Brian. We just like, need to start a Joe Rogan style podcast where we only talk to people in like business owners or influential people in our area and then blast that out to our database and all over social media. Yes. It's bringing benefit to them. And then we sponsor it ourselves. Yes. Whoa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's easy as hell. Yeah. And, and wow. StreamYard's free. It's kind of like what we do with White Claw. People don't know that we own the company. It's just they watch the podcast. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we yeah. never even mention it. But again, this is low cost. So that's not even a webinar style, right? This is this is Dude, that's this, this is, is we didn't this is totally different than the topic we were talking about. That's perfect though. But that that can come from it. By the way, yeah. you know, from StreamYard is free. The podcast equipment is is now relatively inexpensive. And yeah, so, I mean, we got good stuff, but you can do it from your phone if you want. Yes, dude. absolutely. And 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 to take what Justin said earlier about you know you know the the sewing the threading you know threads or whatever Brian called it. Um, if it's not called threads. I'll actually be disappointed. Yeah, that'd be great. We need to start a sewing podcast, right? But threads. but we do know people. In fact, 
one of them is on Living. Chris Wise has a Facebook group, a local Facebook group that has like fourteen thousand people, fourteen thousand members in there. So if that person's not a real estate agent, there's plenty of them out there. If they're not, they're they're probably associated with some type of business. That's usually why they start that group. I would go and reach out and build a relationship, and then either ask a sponsor uh, or say, hey, can can I throw a webinar? throw some money at it or money at them. A lot of people can be bought and say, can on, on behalf of XYZ group, can we do a co-host of a, of a, mm -hmm. uh, of a, a webinar on how to buy home, how to sell house, how to X, Y, and Z, how to invest, how to Airbnb. And then from that angle, the, the Facebook moderator, the owner of that Facebook group now edifies you, Justin, me, Brian, Matt, whomever, edifies them as that go-to expert yep. and i'll tell you i ran during covid and i think we did a show on this or or we kind of touched on the topic during covid i ran a virtual home buying event mm -hmm. and we ran facebook ads we ran uh to our to our own database and to the leads in our in our boomtown system and I, we had 171 or 172 people show up nice and and that was during covid right and so so at that time we had it funneled out of those 171, 72 that showed. We had 50, it was like 50 something people request more information about buying or more or financing, yeah. you know, getting into the financing yeah, yeah, side yeah. of the house. And so, you know, then I've lost kind of track of the funneling of did that convert? Because at the time I was like, I, I just wanted to run a test. And so that cost me, you know, I used a company at the time that cost me like 500 bucks. It was really it was it's not like, yeah, pretty cheap. Yeah, it was pretty it's cheap. Yeah. And, and from that, you know, right now, your hook, again, prices are all-time high. Interest rates are all-time high. And and you can go find people. Um, if you don't want to run it yourself, there are companies out there you can partner with that will bring you on as the real estate experts, yeah. you know, that it's still your event. 100%. And they're just the moderator. So, like, for example, the Good to Great live event I did, I brought Wayne Salomons in. Mm -hmm to ask the panel questions. It's still my event. Yep. I'm still the one associated and tied to it. And and from that, Wayne put up there and helped edify me. Logan Stout edified me and, yep. and you know, um, you know, thanked, you know, thanked me and to bring in and putting this all together. So now we have that. It's it's Dude. easy. It's easy. I mean you just gotta do it, man. That's geez, so many things going through my mind right now. But that I mean you laid out the template. That was perfect, dude. But I I, I think I mean, to, to, to almost not, you know, some eyes to wrap this up, like just this conversation is a great example of how these things can develop, right? There, there are so many ways to, to find engaging premises under which to connect with people, ways that you can, you, can, you can partner with people, ways that you can make yourself a part of other people's events and throw your own, whether it's digital, virtual, live, whatever it is. The big thing that holds people back is just the, the the willingness to go forward with it. You know, events, whether they are virtual, as a webinar, digital, whatever, they're relatively cheap. They are a great way to connect. Like, they're such a great way to connect with your audience. They're also such a great way to bring value to other people. And I think that's one of the big parts that we miss is people want to help you with your, your events. It's such a great way to make things mutually beneficial. Justin has built a career off of providing mutual value to other people. Every single event that he does brings more value to other people than it does to him on a pound for pound basis. Is that, I mean, would that be a fair assessment, Justin? Justin? Yeah, no, 100%. I've always, uh, it, the best way I can say is it always comes back in return a million fold, sure. you know, in terms of uh, the best example I can give of this is uh I had probably spent, oh man, I've been following this guy named John Sheflack, who a lot of us know for years. I've been going to his events for seven years. I looked back at my notes the other day. I spent over $22,000 going to his events. Um, wow. Never said a single word to him, um, even though I had the opportunity to, you know, in terms of never approached him, never said anything. Sure. Um, and look back two weeks or a month ago, when did a live event for him. He asked me to speak on stage. It was rare, we don't, not many people like to speak on the stages. And um, I think I did like 150, 180,000, $200,000 yeah. in sales immediately that same day. Um, and so, however, it took you know, five, seven years of putting money, putting myself in those places. And so, however, you know, it was by serving his environment, right? Serving those in his community at a high enough level. One day when I was at his house, he's like, I just want you to know, I know who you are and you need to talk with our team about getting you this and that. And so I think it was just always being obsessed with 
who's in the room, right? Like I also think there's this thing called the buzz generator. Like if I can go and meet, it's weird. I have a backwards philosophy. Anytime I go to an event with like a big name, I have no interest actually in talking to that big name or even rubbing shoulders with them. I, I like to go and meet like their staff, their videographer, yeah. their at administrators. And they're like, hey, do you see Justin? Like Justin's cool, like, you know, whatever. Like, and then it's like, he's like, no, Justin never came up to me. And it almost makes them feel like, does he care about, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's not even right, right, right. a big deal, but it's like, and you do that not for one event, you do that for two events, you do that for three events, four events. Next thing you know, that person's like, why does he never come up and talk to me? But my team's buzzing about him, right? Um, I love so that. it's kind of infiltrating from other sources, which is kind of the theory of knowing who like your top 25 are. So like business to business, I know who my top 25 are, who are the people I need to get into cahoots with. And then what I do is I break down out of that top 25, who is the top 25 in that person's world? Yeah. Because I'll go infiltrate their 25. And next thing you know, they have no, they can't do anything else. And so whenever I'm coaching agents for business, for their business to consumer, I say the same thing. Who are the 25 most influential people in your city? And then who are their top 25? And then once you start infiltrating all those lines, your top 25 can't ignore you because they see you everywhere. Yeah, I like um, that. So. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, that's, it's, I mean, shit, that's great stuff. And, and <laughs> do you know who's part of our top 25? Oh yeah, who's that? The Ron. <laughs> the Ron with Armadillo and Warranty. So yeah. go to armadillo.one backslash store as well as uh, Michael DeBacker. He's definitely up there in our top 25. Justin, I was going to think about this earlier. <laughs> Do you think that we should let all of our sponsors record their own spots and just play them yes. halfway through the podcast? Would that be, Justin, give me your opinion on this. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it would be. Is this too much freedom for them to have? Well, I mean, I'm not saying let them record their own. I would uh, put some limitations on it. <laughs> we but, yeah. it a little bit. but then we couldn't break in and be like, you know who's in our top 25? The Ron. <laughs> That's fair. Because, the, I mean. I just like got... That's fair. Yes. I like our segues. Yeah, well, I, I, you know yeah. what my favorite part is? Is I've been a part of tour for a long time, and I knew – I, I knew like your acronym, like the only real estate podcast worth listening to, but I didn't. Wait, that's what it stands for. But I didn't realize "tour" came from that. So I was right. just that. That's a shortened version. Nobody knows yeah. what it means. Because I was like the the only real estate. Like, what does that mean? The only real estate. Because it, <clears throat> we attach it to everything, and that's so on brand for us to just like come up with an acronym and then just not tell anybody about it at all and just let it sit out. there. But if you game. notice, if you've noticed, we've now changed it. So if you're if you're watching the video, it threw uh, me off. Awesome. Yeah, so now it's T O R E P W L T, which is yeah. Torpelt. Torpelt. Tor yeah, we should probably change that. What Let's happened was no, I, I love created it. a new logo, sent it for approval to everyone. No one responded. That's also and one so we just went with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That it, it means it got approved. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If we exactly. if we don't like it, no one it, objects. It's yeah. automatically approved. No. Yeah, fair enough. No. All right. So so mortgage Mike of Texas. Please check com. out armadillo dot one backslash tour. Mortgage Mike at Texas.com. HomewardDFW.com. And then SphereRocketVA.com. Please check out SphereRocketVA.com for sure. Uh, Justin, do you have, you know, before we, we have one last question for you, um, and it's for us as well, but what is the, what's, do you have a website for the, the event coming up on May 19th? Um, we do, but the website will charge you. And you guys, since you promoted so well, um, each have just, so few tickets left in your name. However, there are <laughs> tickets left in each of your names that are VIP tickets that get you uh, the Chris D'Elia show, uh, the comedian. Yeah. We paid him. Chris D'Elia's coming! <laughs> I don't know anything. I What? He's all over my reels right now. I've been so up on this and I did not hear not, that. Have you not? Like, yeah, Justin's yeah. like, and yeah. that's, that's May 19th, right? Yeah, Thursday night in this like literally he's doing the show just for our group. So Bro, is he I'm I'm gonna tell you right now the hotel you got me is a block from my house, so I just plan on throwing a party there. Is yeah, he uh, let's get him to come to my hotel party. Yeah, exactly. That's fine. Bro, it's that'd be amazing content. It's a live and event. Jesse's coming, he's gonna film it, it'll be great. Live event. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah. be shots of Chris Delia all night. Now, yeah. Justin, let's let's ask you. So, reach out to us for if you want that VIP. We've got a, we do have a few left. So we're not we we've done a poor job social media wise, but we have given out some of these VIPs. Yeah, we absolutely have. Um, so you know, reach out to us if you can make it up. It's May 19th through the 21st. Yep. Yep. So, um, we've got Kelderman Force and I have a few extra VIP tickets on behalf of Tor. Thank you, Justin. Uh, for doing that. So reach out to us, comment, share this. 
um, we really should have done a better job of sharing it on the show so we can well, say, leave a review, uh, join the Facebook group. You can make up for it. Brian's going to come to the baseball game with me Friday, and we're going to – Are we going to the, the Rough Riders game? Yeah, we rented out 500 tickets. So I live right there. Let's fucking do it, bro. We're 100%. Brian's just yeah. realizing he doesn't have to leave his yeah. neighborhood. This is all happening where I am at. First off, wait, currently where I'm at. That's fine. Wait. First off, why is it Brian? Just Brian? Like Brian's coming out? Because I, I know baseball and you don't. What? Yeah, I'm gonna be calling pitches. I'm gonna be like, he's yeah, I mean, back to you. you all, in my opinion, everybody has to go to a game once in their lifetime with a sucky Yankees fan. Ah, can I tell you a story that only happened to me at a Rough Riders game? Sometimes yeah. they do the thing in between innings where it's like, if the next batter hits a pitch, then this girl wins a Jeep. That's what happened. The Jeep dealership guy came out. This lady came out who was the contestant. And they're like, if any Rough Riders player hits a home run on the first swing of their at bat, she wins a Jeep. It had been a 0 0 game. It was like the seventh inning. The first, not the first swing, the first fucking pitch of the inning. This guy, I think he knew the contest. He was in the yeah. dugout. He was like, I'm fucking swinging no matter what. Drills it over the center field wall. This lady is weeping in my section. She just won a Jeep. Like, I'd never seen it in real life before. That's like the Rangers used to do it was amazing. in the seventh inning. Yeah. They would do the Grand Slam. Yes. Yeah, I think it was a Sonic. It was a Sonic it was a, one. I've never seen anybody win one of those things no. until that happened. I, yeah. think there was a, I think there was a flooring company here locally that when Josh Hamilton hit four home runs, they had to give out like 50 Gs worth yeah. of floors. They gave a bunch of floors to people? <laughs> What a weird bit. That's awesome. Uh, I mean, Josh is. Hamilton, I wonder what he's doing these days. Yeah. yeah. Mm, yeah. You might not want to know. <laughs> I think he's, I think he's yeah. I'm definitely in for the game. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Justin, what? pull this up, Jesse. Justin, what go. would you? One more Here question. We go. We yeah. go one more. All right. If all of a sudden all animals, every single animal could talk, yes. would you still eat meat? Absolutely. <laughs> I don't see yeah. a problem with it, dude. Does anybody have a different opinion? No, I, mean, I, I, I don't. I, one, I just can't conceptualize talking animals and the relationship that I have with them, so I'm just assuming we're going to carry on as usual. Would animals speak the dialect of the country they're in? Like, yeah. I'll just get my shit from overseas. I can't understand you. <laughs> <laughs> that's, just, that's so mean to say. I'm just, I just don't think that's my barometer for eating meat is that you can talk or not. But I mean, if they could talk and you start like it's they start building a relationship, maybe they start in only cows. Podcast. I think the more important, <laughs> the more important question is, does the person running the farm or slaughterhouse sure. care if they speak English? I don't care at all. Well, yeah. not even I'm English, still buying just, it at the store. That is true. I like, you know what I mean? Like, I just I'm not having to hear them be like, no. You like and I, <laughs> it's not like you're going it's not like you're picking out the lobster you're like i'm picking out that cow and they're like no right, you know what no, actually i might be more inclined to eat meat i'd find the snarkiest one <laughs> <laughs> and i'd be well, like you know what that cow has been nothing but a dick ever asked me it was very deep well, that we was way yeah, more existential we're trying to be better like there's some of the ones that we ask you usually we just can't be on the show let me ask you a better oh, one that's also yeah. on the same lines uh -oh. is, is james cromwell still glued to this counter i think i don't know if james cromwell is still glued to the counter in <laughs> you manhattan give some context Jay, on so james cromwell the actor glued his hand to a starbucks in midtown uh, manhattan to the countertop because it was a glue in because the, the, the people who the people who the people who you can't go do a to sit Starbucks, in at Starbucks because people just already sit there. Yeah, they're already there. <laughs> because the people who go to Starbucks are legitimately offended that vegan milk is more expensive. And you can the pita part I don't care about. I, I, I'm just, this is a pita bit. I'm floored that people who go to Starbucks are annoyed by spending an extra quarter for coconut milk. Like pita, they're already, already at Starbucks. Pita. It's oh, dude, there. did you see that viral video of the one shit getting smoked dude, at the Minnesota got, game? Oh, no. Floor. Oh, dude. What happened? No, what? The, the female security. So there were, there were, there were some oh, people. Yeah. Oh, was that a PETA thing? Yeah. So that yeah. was a PETA oh, person. Oh, I thought that was just on. a drunk girl and thing. And the security guard was just sitting there IF and the hell out of her. And she jumped up and she got smoked dude, like Ray Lewis. She, she had the drop on her by a mile, bro. <laughs> and those people sitting in the front row were so <laughs> confused. They all looked like their world was about to end. I didn't know it was a PETA thing. What was the bit? What was she going to do if she succeeded? There had been a couple people. Throw blood on one of the players? No. They've been doing it for a while. They've been doing it, and it's specifically in Minnesota. Like somebody like handcuffed themselves to like a goalpost or something. I like saw that, yeah. Or something. Why? Why is your? And I have actually I have a lot of stuff against PETA, but why is your bit to always glue or handcuff yourself to somebody? I feel like that's you do those things in the absence of a logical argument. Wait, but yeah. it's you're like I can't really talk about this. So I'm just gonna glue myself to the Starbucks counter. Is it vegan glue? Hoof. Isn't glue made out of horses? That's exactly <laughs> it what I'm is, saying. bro. Horse hoof glue. That's what I'm saying. Dude, there was a guy, and Jesse, can you look this up? 
There's a dude that burned himself to death in protest of climate change, which oh, seems no, like dude. the weird way. No, self-immolation has been going on for. Yeah, but <laughs> I get that as a protest. <laughs> Burn to death climate change. Just do that. And this is a real thing. He's this guy. Climate change activist is April 24th. Climate change activist dies after setting himself on fire at the Supreme Court. Okay. I don't. I don't. I'm, I'm sorry this happened. And. If you're protesting climate change, maybe don't burn yourself because that seems seems aggressive. Because aren't we That's upset about a lot of stuff being burned? It's just one of those he's got to be out there on his own. Maybe do it in a neutral way. I'm Is not, that did you have a carbon offset? I'm not touching that one. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm. I am touching it. Yeah. Yeah. Protest however you want, but also don't make it go against everything you just said you stand for. Hey, just, Justin. <laughs> thanks for coming, buddy. Of course. Of Love course. you, kid. Later. Hey, thank you for watching. We truly appreciate it. Checking out another episode of the Only Real Estate Podcast worth listening to. If you're watching this on YouTube, please go ahead, hit that that share button, hit that like button, and hit the subscribe button. Right? We're dropping more stuff on YouTube constantly. If you're on iTunes, leave us a review, please. We're really, really focused on building up those reviews so we can get more searchable content on there. And if you're on Facebook, like everyone else is, go over and search the only real estate group worth being a part of. You're going to want to go join that group. I'm telling you right now, there's so much gold in there. So go join, share us on, on YouTube, and leave us that iTunes review, please. Go do it right now. We'll see you on the next show.